Hello and welcome to tutorial 126 uh, from Markplex and if you're not familiar with Markplex our website is markplex.com and there are a lot of free tutorials and programs and so on all to do with TradeStation Easy Language uh, and MultiCharts Easy Language that can be found there. Now if you haven't seen the first part of this video it's probably useful to do so. What that what both this and the previous video are talking about is using the market depth provider. Now in the first video, I just made it as simple as possible and just showed how you could get market depth price, or rather prices from market depth and plot them on a chart. And here we have the bid levels for the, for the inside bid and the, the, um, the next two bid levels. And we're simply plotting it on the chart. Which, uh, which goes through some of the, the very basics of the uh, market depth provider. This new program, the, uh, what I've called um, Tutorial 126, is a little different. And what this does is it gets the, uh, the market depth information in terms of the size and the price levels. And it draws a histogram on a chart where the, uh, the price level is actually at the price level of a particular bid or ask price. And then the length of the, uh, the histogram, the size of those bars is proportional to the size of, of the, uh, the bid or the ask respectively. And uh, you can see if we just compare this with a standard uh, trade station market depth, you should be able to see, uh, in fact, that's for uh, VX, let me hit this one here. Uh, this is for the, uh, the Bitcoin future. And uh, you'd probably be able to see that the, uh, the values here line up with the values here. This program has just a couple of inputs and they are, let me just show you the, uh, the inputs. There, there are two, the first one is scale. This will um, influence how long the bars are. So uh, if we were to make that 10, then the bars would get to be longer. And if we reduce that, they become less. And the other one is the size of the bars in terms of how thick they are. So at the moment, we've got that set to five. If we set it to six, they would get a little thicker, as you can see there. Now, bear in mind that that histogram can only be, be the uh, thickness can only be between zero and six. And if you try and put in a bigger number, let's just do that. Um, we're gonna get a runtime error. So try seven, for instance, and you'll see we get a user runtime error. So let's just go back and put that back to um, number five, and then we'll have a look through the program, which you are uh, very welcome to copy and type in. Also, if you'd like to save yourself some typing, if you think this is something useful that you perhaps might be able to build on, then uh, then please feel free to um, download it for a small fee. Okay, so let's go through the program. Okay, so we've uh, included various namespaces that were required. And uh, incidentally, if you want to um, work out a quick way of getting a lot of the, the syntax without looking, putting it all in manually, uh, if you go to the toolbox, you should be able to see the market depth provider, which you can double click and that will be applied to the chart. And uh, also in uh, properties for the program itself, if you go to properties and then events, you should be able to double click there and set up an initialized event. And then when you go to the designer generator code for this particular program, then you'll be able to copy the program from the designer generated code and copy it into this program and then ultimately delete the provider from your system tray. So let's go through. Uh, I've already introduced the two inputs, scale and his weight. Then we have one, two, three, four, five, six variables. We have two trend lines, two DT points, a vector, and an also a, a market depth provider that we've called MDP. So the first thing that we do is in the analyze technique initialized, which is something that runs when the program first runs. And uh, I just showed you how you would get that by, uh, by clicking on the properties. First thing we do is check that the, uh, the hist weight is between those two values. And then if not, we raise the runtime error. The next thing we do 
is we create a new market depth provider. Now we want it to be equal to the, uh, the same as the symbol of the chart, so that equals symbol. And then uh, include ECN books, aggregate books, true, true, true. Include market depth, true. Now with this one, uh, I'm using a maximum level count of five. And actually I should say that I've got this applied to Bitcoin futures, which in some ways is a little simpler than, for example, some of the, um, the NASDAQ market depth type information. Because uh, if we just go back to the chart briefly and look at the trade station, trade station, market depth, you'll see that we actually have depths of one for all those levels. The size varies, but the depth is one. So we don't have a lot of market participants buying and selling at this sort of level with this particular futures contract. Okay, we're gonna make this uh, real time and uh, we're also going to load it. We wanna make sure that we're using the same time zone as the chart, so we have a little bit of syntax there to determine that and that uses this uh, analyze technique dot data streams dot stream rather square brackets data num dot time zone and uh, you might just want to make a note of that it's quite a useful um, bit of syntax it can also be used in things like price series providers and then in the market depth provider we've got a lot of events that we set up the state changed and the mdp updated so again just perhaps uh, if i just demonstrate i'll just add one into the systems tray. I can click on that. Seems like my uh, properties have just momentarily disappeared. So let me just uh, get those back if I can. Okay, properties. And uh, it is here that we can go through and change all this information. For example, here in symbol, we would type in symbol. We'd leave time zone as local and then we would come back and change the syntax there. And then if we wanted to uh, create some events, we would just double click there. Double, double click there. You can see how the uh, the syntax appears in the program. And then, as I said, what we could do is we could go to the um, the designer generated code. View designer generated code. And we could actually take this uh, this syntax and copy some of it into our program. But um, that's something that I already did. So I'm going to just get rid of this. Get rid of this and get rid of these two bits of code that have been added to the program. Okay, so that's a little bit of a detour, but uh, that will hopefully save you some time. Now, we wanna um, color the histogram. So what I've done is I've created a vector, which I've called palette, and uh, we've created that here with new vector. And then what I've done is just added some colors to it. In fact, five colors, yellow, green, teal, red and orange, and those colors are then gonna be applied to the lines. Now you might notice that in the original variables, that vector palette doesn't appear. And the reason for that is that it appears here within the method. You'll see vector palette. And that means that that's just local. In this case, that is just local to that method. So here we uh, create the bid ask vector which is the one where we're gonna be storing the trend lines. And we create two trend lines, trend line one TL and TL1. And then what we do is we define those uh, trend lines. Now, what we're doing here is we're just creating some trend lines, just doesn't matter where on the chart. And then what we're gonna do later is we're going to uh, update the position and the color of those trend lines and move them as the uh, the market depth provider updates. Incidentally, uh, with the, uh, the toolbar, you can do a similar principle to the one that I just showed you for the market depth provider with the uh, drawing objects as well, which could also save you some uh, time in writing this, this syntax. So we're not extending it to the left or the right. We're setting the rate, at the, the weight equal to hist weight, which is uh, user input, we're setting it to type solid. What we're then doing is because we're going through a loop to do this, going through a counter from zero to nine, for each of those zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, we're creating the trend lines and we're setting the DT point, start point and end point and uh, other information there. Uh, we're adding it to the chart 
But what we're also doing is then having created the trend line, we're adding it to our bid ask vector using pushback, which is the same way that we added the uh, colors to the palette vector. So at this point, we've we've started the program. What we've done is created the color vector. We've created some trend lines on the chart, but they're just in an arbitrary position at the moment. What we now do though, is when, well, first of all, let me just go the uh, MDP state change. I've just added this just to show you how you could do this. And what this is simply doing is it's uh, when the market depth provider is loaded, it prints a message. And if the market depth provider fails, then it prints a message. So just to get that out of the way. The main, uh, the main business is in the, the update event. And uh, what we do here is first thing is we check that the vector is not null, the bid ask vector that is. And then we go through a line counter from zero to four. So we've got five positions, zero, one, two, three, four, um, zero, one, two, three, four. And uh, in each case, what we do is we create a date time object, dt time equals date time dot create. And then we need to find the date time of the right of the chart. Now, you may be familiar with this, get app info AA, AI right display date time, which we've been using for quite some time. But what we need to do is that's, that's um, a double, uh, a double uh, number. What we need to do is convert that into a date time object. And the way we do that is quite, uh, quite simple uh, when you know how it's dt, dt, dt time, which is this this object that we've just created, dot el date time x, and that needs to be set to get app info and then the AI write display date time. And then we go through each of the levels using the line counter. And the first thing we need to check is that the number of levels that we have in our market depth provider is greater or equal to the line counter plus one. So the line counter starts at zero, but when it's zero, we're still expecting one uh, bid level. So we, we do that check there. And uh, having done that, we then create the two DT points. We create the first one at this D time, which is the, uh, the date time of the right of the chart. And then we put in the bid level price using the line counter. So we get that by typing the name of our market level provider, MDP. Then we put a dot and that's gonna give us various options. We want bid levels and then we find each bid level using the square bracket construct. So for example, that would be zero for the inside bid, one for the next, two for the next, three for the next and so on. So in that we're putting our counter, line counter and then dot price. So that's getting the price. Then the next thing we want to do is because we want to vary these line size based on the total size at a particular level, what we do is we add to the DT time. In other words, we subtract a negative or we, we add a negative amount. So we're subtracting, we're taking away the scale times by MDP dot bid levels again, same as before, but this time instead of price, we're using dot total size. So we have a line which is proportional approximately to the size, uh, rather, yeah, to the size of that level. Then finally, we create DT.2. D time has now changed because we've subtracted this amount or we've subtracted this amount and then price is the same as before. So there we have the two points. Now it could be that we didn't have that data available, in which case, again, we just create the DT points at some arbitrary value just to get them out of the way. Having done that, we should hopefully have two DT points that are relevant to the level that we've just found out about. We can then check that there is a trend line in the vector. We set TL1 to the value of that trend line, or rather to the trend line. And then we just set the, the start point and the end point of that trend line, trend line. We do then exactly the same for the ask levels with a slight difference because most of the uh, syntax, well, obviously we're using ask levels rather than bid levels. 
Um, most of the syntax is the same, but you'll notice when we get down here that because we've got a vector which includes the bid levels and the ass levels, we now need to add a number five to that um, place in the vector so that we're getting the ask levels rather than the bid levels. Apart from that, it's very, very similar. Having done that, we, of course, change the positions there. So that is essentially all there is to it. I've gone through it uh, as quickly as I can, but hopefully as you study it, uh, you, you'll be able to uh, make a little more sense of it. And uh, perhaps this could form the basis of your own uh, study using the market depth provider. So let's just uh, verify that just to make sure I haven't made any terrible mistakes. That looks fine. And we just go back to the chart, arrange all, and uh, just continue looking at this. And you can see if we uh, sit here for a few moments, those, uh, those values moving and changing. Okay, well, thank you very much.